Amen. Well, good evening tonight. Amen. Tonight's the Wednesday service. Amen. Uh, April 13th. Uh, if you're going to be listening to this on our podcast, Activating, it is going to be podcast number 37. And it will be uh, being able to take a stand within the fights that we have with Christianity as Christ Jesus. So in short, amen, being a, a soldier or a warrior, uh, who can take a stand, amen. And so the final title on that, uh, it might change a little bit, but uh, we're here tonight and uh, continuing just to challenge the church, amen, to continue to go forward. Uh, we will always, uh, church, as I always explain for those uh, that are visiting, amen, listening to this on our activating uh, YouTube page, amen. If you're a visitor there, we appreciate you. Uh, but some of these messages, amen, I'll be honest with you, they're uh, they're not for the faint-hearted. Uh, they're not, amen, for those who are just kind of hip-hopping and scopping and skipping from place to place. Uh, these messages, amen, uh, will eventually begin to be develop in a, in a Christian's life, amen, that is beginning to mature uh, in the faith, amen. And so that's why a lot of times I'll say, amen, that these are for uh, our church members, amen, meaning that uh, uh, within this house. And so kind of just picture it like this. If you ever had any kids or if you were a kid yourself, amen, at one time in your life, amen, uh, you went to a family member's house and in that family member's house, uh, you saw how they were able, your cousins, your friends, uh, whatever it may be, and they ran their house a little bit different. I know for myself, I would go spend uh, the weekend, amen, with my cousins and I would come home and I would act a certain way. My mom would tell me very quickly, you go out that door and you come back in. The same little ray that I sent away on Friday better be the same little ray that comes to that door today on Sunday. And what that meant was I would try to get away with what I thought I looked at, amen, in my family, or my cousin's house or a friend's house that I stayed the weekend with. And I would think that I could do that in my own house. And that's what that means. Uh, I believe we're the church and we are just finishing up, amen, a series. And I'll kind of recap that, amen, for, the, for those of you that have been following so you can kind of go along. This is part number six, amen. Uh, the church as a soldier. So we went through that series, amen, as uh, the body, uh, as uh, the, the temple, as the bride, uh, as the voice of God, amen, evangelistic wise, amen. And now today, amen, as the soldier, as a recap, amen. And we're going to tie that in as we look at tonight, amen, what's happening, amen, in the time of Jesus and how of uh, this church series, amen, uh, begin to tie into, amen, right where Jesus, amen, begins to stand forth and give us a great example of what it is to fight our battles in a spiritual sense. And I'm going to say that again, fight our battles in a spiritual sense. And why do I say that, uh, that it's sometimes tailored to this house? I run my house as a parent a different way than many other parents are. And I don't raise my kids according to the way other people raise their kids. And I don't allow my kids to act uh, as though uh, other kids that are raised under a different house. I would tell my children all the time, you live in this house. You are under these rules of this house. And that same happens with this as, as a church. It's personal. We know that each member has a member or a function in the body of the church. And so our church is not the church, but it's a member within the church the body, the church body of all the churches. And so the way that we are discipled, amen, the way that we look at it, we know we have a task. We're a praying church. We're a worshiping church. And we're a discipling church. And I know that I say, well, our churches does that. Yes, but if you ever heard anybody, amen, that's ever visited us, amen, they'll say, Pastor Ray is too tough. And Pastor Ray is too militant. And Pastor Ray, amen, is this way and that way, amen. Well, that's because that's the way we are as a house of God, amen. And so one day, amen, as I shared this testimony many times, and we'll get into the service tonight. Remember, YouTube uh, page activating, amen, if you want to watch that, amen. And if you're watching, amen, and then activating podcast under Spotify, amen, podcast number 37. I've said this testimony before, amen. And so uh, one time, amen, when we had the men's discipleship campus, 
uh, my beloved wife and my uh, beloved daughter, amen, were in the kitchen, amen, and they were conversating, amen. The brothers came in and they were like, man, Sister Claudia, you know, why is pastor so hard? Why is pastor like this? Why is pastor like this? And so forth and so on. And uh, my daughter, amen, would turn around and she would say, that's just how my dad is. And so my mom, my wife, amen, uh, Samantha's mom, uh, she turned around and she told the men, ah, just, you just got to understand Pastor Ray, man. Uh, he was in the military. He's, he was in the fire department. And so he is a lot, in, in a lot of terms, militant. And I remember I sat down with my wife and my daughter many multiple times. And I said, listen, stop saying that. That's not, the, that's not what made me the man of God that I am today. The military didn't make me. I was well over 23 years old before I went in. And the uh, fire department didn't make me the man that I am today. And so that time that my daughter and my wife were sitting, Pastor, Pastor Claudia, were there in the kitchen there at the men's home. And uh, I walked in. I said, that's it. I'm done. Called all the men out. And I began to describe that it's the word of God. It's not these systems of the world, but it's the word of God that taught me how to be a man of God. And so we're going to look at that together. Amen. For those of you who may doubt that. And we're going to look at that, amen, in Ephesians chapter 6 as a recap of the church as a soldier. We're going to go to Ephesians chapter 6. We're going to begin to read, amen, in verse 10. Ephesians chapter 6, verse, excuse me, 10. I'll give you a second to get there. Okay, seconds over. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And remember, this is a recap from Sunday. Verse 11, put on the whole armor of God. You hear that? Armor. So obviously, we're talking about a soldier in a unit or an outfit. Amen. And this is where my daughter and my wife would say, amen, Pastor Ray is the way he is because he was in the military. Pastor Ray is the way he is because he was in the fire service and all these other increment, incremental uh, places that would you would think, right, go to the military and learn how to be a man. But I was already a man before I entered the military. Like I said, 23 years old, I was already putting on the armor of God around after, amen, being eight and nine years old. By the time I was turning 13, amen, I understood the principles of this scripture. And Paul turns around and says, amen, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the whales of the devil. And that word whales, amen, are the attack, the assaults, the tribulations, the trials, amen, the testings of our faith, amen, the fiery darts that come against us, amen, even our minds and our emotions and even in our physical health, amen, that are obviously uh, at times, in times of our lives, amen, assaults from the enemy. And so while into uh, being 12 and 13 years old, I understood what it was and what it was going to take to be able to stand against the whales or the wiles of the devil. Verse 12, but for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against the powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age. Against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Now, you got to study this portion of Scripture in verse 12 alone, because what happens in this portion of Scripture alone, we see spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Now, listen, this is a podcast as well, right? So we, I, I always love to, to jar uh, uh, jar conversations, amen? And that's what I love about Wednesday, because we can have a discussion, amen? And I want, uh, out of the podcast, so much even in the YouTube, but YouTube are just, no offense to you YouTubers, and the people that are looking through YouTube alone, is that we like to see things, amen? We like to see things. I, I appreciate all our listeners on Spotify. Why? Because they don't look, they listen. Come on, somebody. Two different types of mannerisms of receiving what this message is tonight. So in our podcast, maybe this will jar, amen, a conversation. Now, I want you to think about this. Do we sometimes forget that Satan was a, a, a spiritual being, a, a worship leader in the kingdom of God's glory? So when we look at this portion of scripture, it says against spiritual hosts. So it's not this little demon running around. It's a spiritual host. And here's most of this, amen, spiritual hosts with a plural, hosts. 
more than one of wickedness in the heavenly places. What does heavenly mean? Amen. That Esther, uh, 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 that, that place, amen, of that realm of heavenly place. Amen. We can even look, amen. The Bible teaches us in Job's understanding, amen, that Satan goes to and fro, amen, from heaven to earth. Amen. And so we know that there's a, a, a place, amen, where they gather together, amen. And we're fighting things, amen, that we're not going to see in the physical realm. Come on, somebody. We're fighting things and spiritual hosts of wickedness, amen, in even heavenly places. Yes, even Satan and his dominion or minions and, and demonic demons, amen, will come to church. That's why it's important to you and I, amen, to understand who we are in the church. And that's why we're doing this series, amen. Yes, I can come in with an attitude. Yes, I can come in in the flesh. I can come in with sinful natures and sinful desires. Yes, 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 in the church, amen. No, no, no different of as a pastor, amen, where pastors, amen, stand behind a pulpit and they eye and they look at the women in the church uh, and so forth and so on, that members come in the church and they look across the aisles, amen, eyeballing each other. Come on, somebody. And so when we understand it in heavenly places, Yes, even in the temple of God. We know that because Sunday we talked about Jesus making his triumphant entry into Jerusalem. And what is the first thing that he did besides looking at the fig tree and finding it with leaves, amen, and no fruit and cursed it that it would never bear fruit again? He enters the temple of God. And what happens when he enters the temple of God? Amen. He finds his father's house that was supposed to be a house of prayer, and it's been turned into a den of thieves. Amen. Yes, even wickedness operating in the heavenly places. Can I get an amen? I want you to understand this. Amen. Let's talk about that. You ever never had a visit of the Satan, amen, in your church? Come on. In some places, amen, when you're married, it could be a she-devil. Come on, somebody, a flirtatious woman that's trying to get a little friendly. Can I get an amen? So, oh, come on. I'm just preaching to somebody this morning. Come on. Or this evening. Amen. Verse 13. It says this. Therefore, take up the whole armor. Not just pick and choose, but take up the whole armor. And I want you to understand this. Yes. From a military standpoint. Yes. Amen. From a firefighter standpoint or a man or, or, or a servant. Amen. A public servant in uniform. We have equipment and we must take up all that equipment. That's why I like it, amen, and I'm going to pick on the men this night, and, uh, and maybe you can jar, amen, another conversation with this. Men that do not like to work with gloves, they'll say, oh, I don't like to work gloves. The work, gloves are for weak people. Now, I want you to understand this, amen, when you operate and work with gloves, amen, it takes even more strength, amen, to, to grip whatever you're doing, amen. In other words, amen, if you take a grip uh, and you don't have gloves, amen, you feel to touch, amen, uh, what you're squeezing, amen, but when you have gloves, you have a cushion in between that grip, and you must be able to be stronger in order to have the same grip with bare hands than you would with gloves. Why do you wear gloves? Because it protects you. How does it protect you? Amen. It protects you from getting cut. It protects you, amen, from, from being burned, amen. It protects you, amen, from embrace, uh, embracements and, and so forth and so on, amen. And so, you know, men will always say, oh, I, I don't like to wear gloves. Well, because you don't put on the whole armor. Amen. When you look at OSHA and you look at safety, they tell you wear a hard hat, safety glasses, amen, a safety vest, safety boots, amen, and a back brace. Come on, somebody. And also, amen, safety gloves, amen. The Bible teaches us in a similar way. And so here we are, we're looking at Paul the Apostle, and he's looking at this terminology, amen, because he's seen this Roman soldier, amen, he's not riding from a cruise ship, he's not Riding from the Taj Mahal. He's not riding from the Vegas Strip, amen, at the MGM Towers, amen. He's not at the Holiday Inn or Cancun, amen. He's riding from the prison walls of him being in prison falsely for something he did not even do. So he's not crying because he's behind, heart, behind bars. He's literally writing a letter to the church of Ephesus. Yes, he's not writing home to mama and saying, mama, oh, mama, I'm having a hard time in here. No, he's writing a letter as a spiritual leader to lead the people of God. Come on, somebody. And he's not even supposed to be in there. And there he is in prison. And he's watching this Roman soldier show up for duty. Come on, somebody. Roman soldier takes off his, what you call civilian clothes, takes all, all that off. He puts on an ar ar undergarment, and then he starts putting on this armor. And that's why he says, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood in verse 12, but against principalities and against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, 
against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all, not some, not what you want to wear, but having done all to stand. That's why when men or women or people of God begin to come forward and they begin to say, man, I'm having a hard time uh, standing forth in my faith or standing forward, amen, in my, in my hope, amen, or even being able to share with somebody, amen, what God has been doing in my life. My question is, have you put on the whole armor of God? And we went through this on Sunday, so we don't have time to go through it today, but I'll just kind of read through there because there's a, a, a process that Paul begins to witness in this Roman soldier before he reports to duty. I'm going to say that again. Before he reports to duty. See, it's not the Navy that made me this way. It's not the fire department that made me this way. It's not any of the public service, amen, that I've done, amen, for the last 20 some years, amen, before retiring. It's none of those things. It was actually this very portion of scripture that taught me how to be the man of God, to put on the whole armor of God and able to stand against the attacks of the enemy. Look at verse 14. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness. And verse 15, and showed, and having shod uh, your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, and above all, taking the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. All the fiery darts of the wicked one. He didn't say be able to take a spear. He says in verse 16, above all, taking the shield of faith, which you will be able to quench, turn it off, stop it, all the fiery darts of the wicked ones. People say, oh, I'm going through these mind battles. Listen, you do not have the shield of faith. And I want you to take this, amen. See, he says, amen, put on the breastplate of righteousness. That's a, a stationary piece of armory. It is what covers and girds and protects, amen, your vital organs on your body. And righteousness will always, amen, protect the vitals of your spiritual body. It'll protect your heart. Uh, it'll protect your lungs in which you breathe, the very air that God gives you, amen. It will, uh, it will uh, uh, protect, amen, the digestive system like your gut and your stomach, uh, amen. In other words, if you are living in righteousness of God, you will put on the breastplate of righteousness and righteousness will protect, amen, even how you have an ability to swallow, come on, somebody, swallow scripture. Hello, somebody. Am I talking to somebody? Come on. I'll bang on this little mic. Hello. Am I talking to somebody? That you will be able to even digest a sermon. Come on. That you're not a little baby where mama has to burp you when you go out to church. Amen. That wife, wifey has to burp you. Amen. Oh, I know, honey. I know the message that the pastor preached was a little too hard. Let me, let, it's okay. No, 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 no. And you're burping your husband. Come on, somebody. And so the reality is because we're not living in righteousness in our guts. Uh, our guts, amen, is, is infected, amen. It is infected and not allowing us to observe and absorb the nutrients of every scripture. Come on, somebody. Oh, we like the scriptures, amen. Wife, submit to your husband. But what about water your wife with the word of God, man of God? What about water the word, your wife with the word of God, not just Give her a morsel, but water her. Come on. Like you water your garden, like you water your front lawn, like you water your side yard, you water the backyard, amen? Come on, somebody. And so in this, amen, we understand that there's a lot. Amen, it says, put on the show, having showed your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, amen, that you'll be able to walk in peace. Come on, somebody. And I want you to understand this because we're going to see, we're going to see what's leading today up into Friday service. Yes, we do have a Friday service called Good Friday. It's amazing how many Christians do not go to church on Good Friday. That's actually the night of the day that Jesus dies on the cross. And it's amazing. Yes, I'm talking to you. It's amazing on how many people will not show up to church on Good Friday. And I'll say this, man, and I'll say it. Like I said, this is for our house. Praise Chapel Covina. Activating Community Center. Praise Chapel Pomona. It's for us right here. Amen. It's a shame. If you don't show up to church on Friday when he dies, but you show up to church on Sunday when he rises, when he rises from the dead. Come on, somebody. Because what we celebrate 
is that he paid a price for our, my sinful nature in life. Can I say amen to that? Verse 16, above all, take up the shield of faith, which you are able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. The shield is something that you can move. Your, your faith is always moving. Come on, somebody. It's always moving that you can protect from every angle that the enemy is attacking you. Verse 17, and take on the helmet of salvation, right? A hard hat when you get on the construction site, a motorcycle helmet when you're riding a motorcycle, a bicycle helmet when you're riding a bike, and put on the helmet of salvation, which will gird your brain, your mind, your eyes, and yes, even your mouth, amen? And it's amazing when we talk with profanity and we talk with, 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 with slothfulness and we talk with slang and slender, amen, and slurs and all these other things, amen, when you put on the helmet of salvation, yes, even your tongue is saved. Come on, somebody. Because your mind is saved, your eyes are saved, and yes, even your ears are saved, amen? I, I, I it, it scares me of the moments, amen, of maybe one day making a mistake and cussing. Come on. But because I have the helmet of salvation, my mouth should be saved. Come on. Some of us need to get salvation in your mouth. The way you talk to your wife, the way you talk to your husband, come on, women. Instead of putting them down, you should be putting them up. Instead of leaving them behind, you should be le uh, uh, encouraging them to go forward and get in the front. Come on, somebody. To lead and to direct. As we said on Sunday, fathers, do not provo provoke your children into wrath. Amen. Parents, you should be encouraging your children to succeed, encouraging and admonishing your children to success, not causing them to be angry at you by your attitude, by your mouth, and by your words. Come on, somebody. And then it goes on to say, amen, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And there are many Christians, amen, that are afraid, amen, to arm themselves with their sword of the word of God, amen. So we're walking out into battle, into the world, amen, without any weaponry. And what that means is knowing the word of God. And many Christians do not read Monday through Friday, let alone Saturday and Sunday. Amen. We'll listen and we'll follow along. Amen. But this ain't Kenny Garden. Come on. This ain't Coco Melon. Amen. And we're having to read the scriptures. Come on, somebody. Can I get an amen? This ain't blue in the big, uh, big house. Amen. Amen. Got to get what I'm saying. Amen. We do not need uh, JJ the jet plane to help us to understand the scripture. Amen. We should, as the Bible says in First Peter, amen, put away the childish things and the milk of the word and start eating the meat, the carne, amen, the scriptures, the power of God's word. And that sword, amen, is that weaponry. And I want you to understand this, amen, because I'm always loaded with a sword in some form or some, uh, some way. I forgot my uh, my uh, Milwaukee one that brother, a brother of mine in Pomona, amen. Brother Robert gave to me, but I got this sword. Amen. I got the scripture of the Bible in this sword. Amen. But the word of God is like this. Amen. It's a multi tool. Come on, somebody. It's a pair of pliers. Come on. It's a screwdriver. It's a can opener. You know, I don't carry a can opener with me. When I'm opening up a can of something, I'm using this Leatherman to open up a can of beef stew. Amen. Like I had at the campsite the other day. It's like a pair of scissors. Come on, somebody. It's a knife. And just like I cut some branches, it's a saw. That's the word of God, amen. It's like a weaponry. It's a two bag. Uh, it's an equipment, amen, that you and I are letting go unused. Come on, somebody. Going unused. And the sword of the spirit is the word of God. And that's why it's important because we're going to transition over into a sword use that Peter tries to do to prevent Jesus from the moment that we're getting ready to celebrate this Friday, and that is the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Amen? So remember that, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. It says in verse 17, verse 18, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful. Say that word, watchful. Being watchful. I say amen, keeping your head on a swivel. When somebody's walking with me, watch my six. Amen? And so it says here, be, be watchful to this end with all perseverance, and supplication for all 
I want you to say that for all the saints, not just the pastor, not just the layman, not just the clergy, not just the leader, not just the woman's leader, the men's leader, amen, the youth leader, amen, the worship leader, amen, the usher leader. Come on, somebody. No, all saints. And when we understand these foundations that we opened up, amen, on Sunday, just as a very phrase, amen, it brings us to this understanding that Paul begins to teach us, amen, that we are to take stands and we are to uh, be under the power of God because we struggle, but not against flesh and blood. And there are always going to be real evil powers in this world. And unless someone is equally, uh, completely blind, they can see and hear about it every day on the news and what we're experiencing as every Christian in our lives. Can you say amen? So with that, amen, I want to jump over to Matthew. I'm going to jump over to Matthew chapter 26. And I want you to continue to think about that sword, right? He said, take up the sword of the spirit. And right after the denial that Peter, amen, you know, Jesus began, and I want you to say, this, this, you and I are just, just so much like this, okay? Look what it says in, 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 in Matthew chapter. I'm going to jump back here a little bit. Okay. Uh, Matthew chapter 26, verse 26. I want to take you through this. Amen. And I hope it challenges us. Amen. To talk about these things. Amen. On this podcast. You know what? Matter of fact, I'm going to change this podcast to number 38. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to post Sunday's podcast as podcast number 37. And this tonight will be podcast number 38. So you can understand how that ties in together with us today. And hopefully let's talk about it. Amen. Don't forget, Sunday nights, we have gossiping. Gossiping. Gospel and sipping. Gossiping. Gossiping. Gospel, we talk about the word of God and sipping coffee at the same time. Sunday nights at 6 p.m. Gossiping with Pastor Ray. Come on, somebody. The gospel and coffee. No better combination. Amen. So when you turn around and tell your friends or you tell your wife or you tell your husband, hey, man, I'm going to gossiping. I'm going to gossip. I'm going to get the gospel and I'm going to sip on some coffee. Come on, somebody. And we also have green tea, orange tea, chai tea, black tea, green tea, whatever you want. Verse 26, chapter 26 of the book of Matthew. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it and gave it to the disciples. And he said, take and eat. This is my body. Then he took the cup and he gave thanks and he gave it to them saying, drink from it, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Jesus hadn't even died yet. And he's already teaching them about this. Verse 29, but I say to you, I will not drink of the, this fruit of the vine from now until that day when I drink it with, with you in my father's kingdom. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, all of you will be made to stumble because of me this night. For it is written, I will take, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will scatter. Verse 32. But after I've been raised, I will go before you to Galilee. Now look at what every disciple says, just like Peter in verse 33. Peter answered and said to him, even if all are made to stumble, the account of you, I will never be made to stumble. Here's this arrogant. I tell you, man, for how many times I've heard, I got your back, pastor. I'm with you, pastor. I ain't going nowhere, pastor. Nope. Sorry for those of you on Spotify that are only listening. I am actually with my hand over my eyes, and I'm searching the whole church right now. And yes, not one of those individuals are present right now. Wait, hold on. Let me, I think maybe row 57 over there, right? Row 57? No. I thought that looked like him. Hi, brother. How you doing? Bro, no, behind you, row 50, 61. And we got so many seats in this place. I'm just trying to look. And no, I don't see. No, they didn't show up tonight. See? 
Amen. So here we go. Peter says, and even if they are all made to stumble, I will never be made to stumble. Verse 34, Jesus said to him, and surely I say to you, Peter, that this night before the rooster crows, you will not only deny me and be made to stumble, but you will deny me three times. And Peter said to him, even if I have to die with you, Jesus, how many Christians have ever said that? I'll die for Jesus right now. We can't even suffer for Christ one day. Come on, somebody. We can't even get up on Sunday on time to get to church on time. Hello, somebody. And I'm telling you right now, we're so packed out right now with 1,298 empty chairs right now. Sounds like an echo in here. We say we'll die for Jesus, but we're not even in church on Wednesday. Come on, somebody. We say we'll die for Jesus, and when payday happens on Friday, we're not even in Bible study for Friday. And I'll tell you this, amen, on Sunday, we forget who he is when we're preparing for our Monday. Come on. But the reality is, amen, you'll miss gossiping on Sunday night at 6 p.m., but you won't miss Starbucks, amen. Hello, somebody. And so the reality is, amen, he says, amen, I will die with you. I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Come on. Yes, Jesus, we will not. Oh, Jesus, we will not deny you. Verse 36, the Bible says that Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to the disciples, sit here while I go and pray over there. I want you to catch this, amen, because the reality and the challenge in this, amen, and I want to just strike this another conversation. That's three conversations. And I, I, I'm looking for your comments, amen, on YouTube and, and on Spotify and even in my text box message, amen. In verse 36, Jesus said to the disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. I mean, how many times has Jesus asked us to stand in with him? Remember, we opened up. I just did a, an overview of Sunday's message in the ending of our series, The Church as a Soldier. And we're talking about taking a stand. We're talking about the sword. We're talking about watch, be watchful, having your head on a swivel, watching each other's six and I want you to understand this. How many times have you made a promise to God and didn't fulfill it? How many times you told somebody else, I'll be there? Like Michael Jackson, I'll be there. I'll be there. Come on, somebody. And when you need them to be there, they're nowhere to be. Come on, somebody. And so he says this, amen, sit here while I go and pray over there. In verse 37, he tells them, he tells them sit down. While I go and pray. They had the easiest task of to sit there while he went over there to pray. In verse 37, the Bible says this. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, John and James. And he began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed. In verse 38, then he said to them, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful even to death. Stay here. And here goes that W word. And watch with me watch with me ephesians chapter 6 we just talked about that be able to be watchful look what it says in verse 39 and he went a little further and he fell on his face and he prayed saying oh my father if it is possible let this cup pass me by nevertheless not as i want or as i will but as you will then in verse 40 the bible takes a shift and the bible says in verse 40 then he came to the disciples and he found them sleeping how many of us are sleeping right now and what i mean by that i want to talk about that sleeping and that slumbering amen you're a pew a pew sitter you're sitting in the pew amen you're on the sideline and literally, some of you are asleep right now. It's not even 8 o'clock yet. Or is it? 8.30. And you're already asleep. Oh, but pastor, you don't understand. I get up at 4 o'clock. Oh, pastor, I don't, you don't understand. You know, I, 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 I got a lot of stuff. To do. Pastor, you don't understand. I'm tired. But, oh, my God, when you want something, when you desire something, 
Amen. When you have an urge for something, oh, you will go without hours of sleep. You will go without days with sleep. Oh, my God, you'll do whatever you want to do and leave from there and go straight to work uh, and pull another eight hour, 10 hour shift the next day and then catch up on sleep on the weekend or whatever. But when it comes to our relationship with God, amen, how many excuses and how many rhymes and reasons, uh, amen, I'll tell you, man, we got more rappers in the church than any. But I, I, I'm telling you, even on death row records does not have enough uh, or, or the same amount of rappers that we do in the church. Amen. Oh, because, man, I'll tell you, when people miss church, uh, they come in like Tupac. Amen. Uh, oh, they start rhyming and beeping and ooh, oh, gee, oh, pastor. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I wasn't in church because, uh, 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 man, I had uh, 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 had this going on uh, and I couldn't make it. Uh, oh, uh, I, 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 I'm not faking it. Uh, I love G and so they come out with all these rhymes and they're they're like free flowing amen i'm like man I didn't know it was open mic tonight because you're spitting some rhymes amen uh, uh you're you know, come on somebody how about just be faithful peter didn't understand that his words saying were not going to ever meet up with his action saying come on somebody so I challenge you tonight, amen, even on this podcast, how many times have you committed uh, in your own personal relationship with God to go to the next level, and yet your actions have not proven what you're trying to claim through your speaking? Come on. And I want you to watch this with me, amen, because Jesus says in verse 40, he came to the disciples and he found them sleeping. He told one set of disciples, sit here. He told the next set of disciples, which was three, stand here and watch with me. Come on, somebody. And then he comes and he finds them asleep. That's what's happening even in today. Some of us have been called by God. Some of us have been given miracle breakthroughs by God. In other words, you have received a miracle, lady. And God has broken through in your life, amen, and you are experiencing overwhelming provision of God, amen. May it be a, a place to live. May it be a house. It could even be that you have a job or maybe God came through on a car and maybe God came through in your finances. Maybe God came through in rehealing and mending a relationship. Amen. That you had been praying for. Amen. And I want you to understand. And you say all these things. Oh, God, I pray that you would do this. Oh, oh God, I pray and I promise God. And all of a sudden he's coming through with all those things. And we have not made good on those promises come on somebody. he asked these men to stand there and watch with them and yet he comes back and he finds them asleep and he says to peter remember peter remember peter just right now and in, in, in literally a couple of verses amen to the left where he says amen uh, in verse 30 uh, 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 verse 33 he says jesus says i say to you that this night before the rooster crows you will deny me three times he says amen peter said to him even if i have to die with you i will not deny you and so said all his disciples. Remember, he says, amen, I will not. Even in verse 33, Peter says, and I answered, I say to you, even if I am made to, I, uh, even if all are made to stumble because of you, I will never stumble. And yet he says to Peter, Peter, what? What? Verse 40. What? Could you not watch with me even for one hour? One hour. He tells Peter, you say you're going to die? And you won't deny me. You say that everyone will be made to stumble, but you will not. And I give you a task to stand with me and be watchful with me for one hour. He says, verse 41, watch and pray lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And that word flesh, amen, is uh, sarks, amen, uh, S. A-R-X, Sarks, in the Strong's 4561, Strong's 4561, it says, it, it is literal <clears throat> sense, Sarks refers to the substance of the body, whether of animals or persons, in 1 Corinthians 15:39, in its uh, idomatic use, amen, the word indicates the human race or personhood in an ethical and spiritual sense, Sarx is the lower nature of a person and the seat and vehicle of sinful desires. Flesh is weak, 
your sinful desires, amen, the things that you are needed, amen, to, to get your lower nature of a person, amen, into a spiritual sense uh, and in an ethical sense to be right before God. We're weak in those areas. We're weak. That's why when you stumble, because you've been living, you've been living off of your weak side. Come on, somebody. You know, when you take, you know, those people, amen, the, you know, the Southie people, you know, oh, no, get my good side. That's not my good side. Oh, this is my, oh, hold it up. You know, people, why they hold it up? Because they get a better view. You know, it's a better view of you. And so there they are, amen. You know, you're looking for your good side, your weak side, amen. Your sinful side is your weak side. And that's why we're supposed to live on our spiritual side. I didn't say it. Jesus said it. He said the spirit is need is willing, but the flesh is weak. So every time you make a mistake, every time you fall short of God's glory, every time, amen, you stumble in your words and your actions. Yes, and I will always challenge you men in the loving of your wife. You stumble in those areas because you're operating from your weak side. Come on, somebody, instead of your spiritual side. You're operating from your weak side and not your spiritual side. I'm going to work on an example of a, and a podcast for that, amen, and talking about how that's relative, amen, for you men and women, amen, that are married and those that wish to get married and how that plays out in relationships. Come on, somebody. Indeed, your spirit is willing, but your flesh is weak. It says again a second time in verse 42. And he went away and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if this cup cannot pass away from me unless I drink it, you, your will, be done. Verse 43, and he said, and he came and he found them asleep again. Are we reading this right? Verse 40, what, Peter? The one who said he will die with me? The one who said even though everybody else stumbles? Look at this picture. There's three of them, Peter, James, and John. They fall asleep. They stumble. I'm not going to stumble. They fall asleep. I'm not going to fall. Asleep. I'll die with you. Even die at death by sleeplessness. Come on, somebody. Some of you Christians, amen, are, 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 are and I, I just, this is what the spirit, because I was praying about this the last few days. Some of you Christians are just overwhelmed, amen, with all the issues that are going on in your life and around you. You're allowing the enemy to pick at you. And some of you, amen, are even getting addicted to sleeping aids. I want to warn you with that, amen. The founder of Hillsongs uh, United, amen, and Hillsongs Australia, amen, Houston, amen. Him and his wife, his wife been let go and fired. He stepped down and resigned as the founder after almost 40 years of ministry. Why? Because it all started with him not being able to sleep. How do you and I as Christians who live and walk in the peace of God have unrestlessness. I'll tell you one thing. There are nights that I can't sleep, but I've learned one thing. I remember sitting down with my wife, amen, at the earlier age of our marriage, amen, when we first got together. And I said, if we cannot sleep, that means God is calling us to pray. Come on, somebody. And we see that right here. My wife said, how do you get that? Right here what God says. Hey, can you not stand with me for one hour? And so my wife and I, when we had sleepless nights, we'd get up and we'd pray for an hour. Why? Because the Bible said to Peter, can't you just... Stay awake for an hour and pray with me and watch with me. And so we pray for an hour. That's how we got into early morning prayer. Because one hour led into two hours and two hours led into three and three hours led into four. And all of a sudden we, we understood, amen, we need more of God. We need to take this prayer, amen, even deeper. We started coming to the church at four o'clock in the morning, started early morning prayer. And here we are praying and praying and praying and praying. When my kids started to grow up, I began to teach them and disciple them in the similar actions, amen. So when you can't sleep, God wants you to pray. He don't want you to toss and turn and roll. And, 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 and No, that's called tormentation. You're being tormented, amen, by the enemy, or you're being tormented by unrestlessness. But I'll tell you one thing. Get up. Shake off that torment and start praying and start, amen, as it said here in the word of God, in supplication and prayer always, amen, that we continue to move in the mightiness of God's hand. Can you say amen? And so when we think about this, amen, we come to this place where God is doing so much in our lives, amen, but we need to be standing in that gap. In verse 40, he falls asleep. They fall asleep. And he tells them in verse 41, wake up. The spirit is, in, is willing, but the flesh is weak. Verse 42, he comes and he says to his father again. And then he comes back in verse 43. 
and he came and he found them asleep again for their eyes were heavy. You ever been that tired? Oh my God, I'm just tired. I'm falling asleep. Their eyes were heavy. So he says in verse 44, so he left them. I want you to catch that. He left them and went away again. And he prayed a third time saying the same words. Man, this broke my heart as a young teen. When I started to see my family falling apart, when I started to see my loved ones, amen, being in torment, and man, just the decay of everybody around me, I began to watch them, amen. They were going to church. I was that little traveso at church. I'd watch them. I go, man, they're praising God today on Sunday, and they're living like devils on Wednesday, and they're partying on Friday, amen, like the world. And then once again, they're back in the church. And I vowed, amen, in my own life. I said, man, why would I put myself through that? When I, as a kid, believe what God says in his word. And so I desired, amen, to be that parent, that husband, to just stay the course in one direction. And that was all with God. And when I finally surrendered, oh, I did my time. Oh, I ran from God for 20 years, amen. I ditched and dodged, amen, every call and every opportunity that God was giving me. Oh, I'm not telling you that I didn't, but I did, amen. But the moment I committed with God, it was all that and nothing else. Can you say amen? Why? Because look at verse 44. So he left them. Oh, my God. I don't want to be left by Jesus. I do not want to be where I should be engaged in watching what Jesus is doing. Following after Jesus. Amen. Walking and talking with Jesus. Come on, somebody. And yet I'm asleep. And Jesus says, you're asleep again? Imagine this. He comes back in verse 40, and he came and found them sleeping again, for their eyes were heavy. Verse 44, so he left them, and he went away again to pray. Oh, my God, Lord, I just don't ever want you to catch me sleeping and leave me where I'm at, and you continue to do your father's book. You get what I'm saying? Are you getting what I'm saying? And then he came back in verse 44. Then he came to his disciples and he said to them, are you still sleeping and resting? You know, some of us today, some of us have been resting, amen? And we've been on rest mode, man, for way too long. We've came, amen, with every rhyme, rim, and hymn, and everything else. And we've come to those places where we say, well, God, you know, uh, man, you know, this is going on in my life. And right now I just need to take a step back, man. I, man, thank God that he doesn't take a step back from us. Thank Jesus that he doesn't take a step back from us. Thank God the Holy Spirit never takes a step back from us until we take a step back from him. And even then he still by his love and mercy and grace continues to press in. And I want you to understand that. Amen. Because this Sunday is special to us. This Friday is special to us. And 2020, uh, 2013, amen, it was on a good Friday service before my, my grandmother in Pomona, amen, went into a, a care home and she fell and messed up her hip, amen. We started, amen, Bible study on Good Friday in 2013, right there in my grandparents' home. That would lead into, amen, the launch of Praise Chapel, Pomona, and we've been working that ministry ever since, amen. Easter in 2018, amen, after my wife defeated, amen, the assaults against strokes against her life, amen. It was Easter Sunday, amen, that we made our return back to the church. But not by first, Good Friday, 2018. On that Sunday of Easter 20, 2018, amen, we started to see a new church being assembled by God. And today, many of those individuals that and families that showed up on that Sunday for Easter 2018 are still here today. They've grown, they've gotten married, they have children, and they're having more children, and their children are growing up. Come on, somebody. But I tell you this, amen. I know what it is to mourn. We took three years, amen. I took three years, amen, to settle down and just say, Lord, I'm waiting on you. Now, I didn't take a break from what God had given me. I've been doing that for over 20-some years. Why would I take a break from that, amen? 
Now, we didn't start nothing new. We hadn't gone forward doing anything new. We maintained what God had already given us responsibility for. And I'll tell you one thing. There is a time when you're resting. And then there's a time when you have to engage. I remember when my son got sick, amen. And we took about five years, amen. And I, I, I took Mondays, amen. And I dedicated my life to helping him develop out and his mom, uh, Pastor Claudia, helping our son develop out of his disability. I remember when my daughter was being born, amen, and we took six months away from the church, amen, because we have to be in bed rest, amen, so that she could uh, be delivered, amen, and believe God's miracle for that. And so I wanted to tell you, there's times when you have to take rest, but some of us, we're still on siesta. We've been on siesta for a decade now. Come on, somebody. We, listen, I want you to understand this, amen, for this time. The church as a soldier needs men and women being active in what God is doing. Let me read you this illustration as I close. I got 10 minutes. It's 849. We close at nine. Come on, somebody. Hang with me one more minute. And I want to read this for you. <clears throat> in the book of Illustrations Unlimited, in 1988, page 41, James S. Hewitt wrote this, excuse me, illustration. He said this. And I want you to think about this right now, especially what's going on in our nation with Ukraine and Russia and over there in Iran and China and everything else. James Hewitt said this. When Napoleon was an artillery officer at the siege of Toulon, he built a battery in such an exposed position. A battery was an area where uh, it would fire off the big guns, amen, as a response uh, to uh, the attack. It would, there were offensive and defensive uh, equipment in that weaponry in that battery, but he built it in such a exposed position. I mean, it was in the front lines, but it was exposed. I mean, it wasn't undercover. There was no trees, no mountain, no rocks. That he was told, it was such an exposed position that he was told as the artillery officer that he would never find any men who would be willing to man that battery because of its location. In other words, if you got in that position, be ready to be sniped out, be ready to be bombed out, amen, because it is in an exposed. They can see you like you're out in broad daylight. But Napoleon had a sure instinct for what was required. So in his mind, he said, I know what to do. So he put up a sign at this battery that said the battery of men without fear. The sign read across the nation and across the region, the battery of men without fear. And that battery, although highly exposed of its position, was always manned by men. Why? Because he said, this battery is for men without fear. And so there was always somebody that was willing to prove they were a man without fear. See, Paul notes, amen, that we're not to be strong with the Lord, but we are to be strong in the Lord. Can you say amen? And so being strong in the Lord is different than being strong with the Lord. And so here, God, Jesus begins to tell them, amen, as he comes back, he says, are you still sleeping and resting? I want you, I'm going to plead with you. If you're listening to this on the podcast, if you're listening to this on YouTube, amen, get out of your season of rest. Because sometimes we've overstayed that season. Come on, somebody. Behold, the hour is at hand. Is what Jesus says. Are you still sleeping and resting? Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of 
sinners. I want you to think about this, and I'm going to close with this, amen, because I want you to understand this. I want to strike our fourth conversation tonight. Is Jesus today still being betrayed? And is Jesus today still continually being uh, handed over into the hands of sinners? I want you to think about that. And I want to challenge that. I want, you to, I want you to respond to that. Because is it today? I'll tell you this right now. I believe today that Jesus is still the image, the foundation, and the message of Jesus is still being handed over into the hands of sinners. And what I mean, I don't mean that we are all sinners. Say by grace, what I'm talking about, I'm talking about the ungodly, those who want to remain sinners, those who do not confess Jesus as their Lord and Savior, and those, amen, that do not believe that there's a God, the anti-God believing movement, amen, amen, the atheists and so forth and so on, amen. What does that mean? We're trying to take the message of Jesus and we're putting it into the hands of sinner and we're trying to rewrite it that it makes sense to me or it makes me feel better. Oh, God doesn't say that that's okay. He says, hey, man, he knows you're a sinner. Oh, God said it's okay to drink. I'm, I know what's a little bit of wine, you know, come on, you know, what's a little bit of hokey pokey and a little bit of this. No, listen, I believe today that we must take a stand as the body of Christ and as the church of God, as a soldier, willing to watch our back, to be watchful, to stand in prayer with supplication and continue to understand that our spirit is willing, but our flesh is weak. He said, verse 6, 46, rise and let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. In verse 47, as I close with this last scripture, as while he was still speaking, behold, Judas, one of the 12, with a great multitude, with, here goes the S word, Remember I told you, the sword of the spirit with swords and clubs came from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Verse 48, now his betrayer had given them a sign saying, whoever I kiss, he is the one, seize him. Verse 49, immediately when he went up to Jesus and said, greetings, rabbi, and kissed him. But in verse 50, the Bible says, but Jesus said to him, friend, why have you come? Then they took and they came and they took and laid hands on him and on Jesus and they took him. And here it is. I want you to understand this. Fighting by the flesh and not by the spirit. Here goes Pete, good old Peter in verse 51. And suddenly one of those who were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his hand. Ear. But Jesus said to him, put your sword in its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Or do you think that I cannot pray to my father and he will provide me with more than 12 legions of angels? And how then could the scriptures be fulfilled that it must, that this must happen? I want you to understand that because multiple times, amen, and I'll strike our six conversation six for the symbol of man and we're done how many times i know i do i get it all the time when men call or people call the church call and here's the thing we're trying to fight our battles amen in our own might we're trying to fight them amen in our own terms take up the spirit of the sword the sword of the spirit which is the gospel of the word of god not the sword of your flesh your 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 filetto your sword your knife uh, uh, your dagger no listen we need to fight our battles with scripture and so i challenge you this easter or this pre good friday service become a student of the word i challenge you I know people say, oh, pastor, send me scriptures. Oh, pastor, you know, encourage me. No, listen. I'm not a spa. You don't, you don't pay a fee and come in here and, and lay out and I massage your forehead and, and give you a body wax. Are you crazy? No, we are a body of Christ. And I don't know about you, but I engage in my teaching and my studies in myself amen i take up my sword daily and yes god puts us together to be like-minded soldiers christians believers in the kingdom of god we need to get out of that motion and that notion that somebody should be feeding us if we're ever in a place to say well i'm not growing there because you're not going there 
I'm not growing there because you're not going there. In other words, I'll ask him, how many times you go a week? Well, I sometimes go on Sunday. Exactly. You're not growing because you're not going. And I want you to understand this, amen. As the word of the Lord says, amen, you're not even going to the next level in your faith with God. You're not growing from last year. And you're not going from last year. Come on. Some of us are still on siesta. Some of us are still on summer break. Some of us have been on spring break, amen, for the last 20 years. Hello, somebody. God saved you 12 years ago, and you're still, come on. I might put a little chip on here and just, uh, I'll behave. Come on. I'm done. I'm over. He said, amen. Didn't you know that the scripture be fulfilled, that it must happen thus? Wake up. Let's be that body of Christ, amen. And understand, I know I just, somebody just told me the other day, amen. Oh, the war is over. Jesus, yeah. But the battle still today is raging. The enemy is still coming against the body of Christ. The church is still consistently under attack. And every believer is under attack no differently. And so I challenge you tonight, amen. Will you pray and ask God to challenge you, amen, to a new level? And to a new destiny, amen, that he'd wake up your spirit, amen, and that you would discipline your flesh, amen, to be in subject to your spiritual mind and your spiritual soul and your spiritual strength, amen, that you get from the spirit of God, amen. Come on, I, I want you to understand this, amen. I am human like everybody else. I got the, the same assaults against my mind. I got the same assaults against my health. Uh, I'm still a father, amen. I still have to raise my children, amen. Oh, I'm still responsible for my son, amen. And I'm there, amen. And I'm raising, feeding, and caring, and taking care, and all these other things. And, and then I still have life as a human being, as a man, amen. And all these things. Uh, I like it when I, I'm amazed, amen, and like it when other people tell me, oh, man, but I wasn't created like you. You, Pastor Ray, you can be disciplined against uh, the opposite sex. Uh, you can be disciplined, amen, about not looking at women in an inappropriate way. But I just like women. I'm not created like you. We are all created the same. It's just that my flesh is subject to the spirit man. Come on, somebody. And I don't talk to my wife. I never talk to my wife, uh, amen, at the, at the mature point in my marriage, amen, in my life, amen. In an inappropriate way, never put her down, encouraged her, exhorted her, watered her daily, amen, with the word of God. You don't talk down to my children, amen. I don't stir them into wrath, amen. I exhort them and support them and encourage them into success all the days of my life, amen. Why? Because the flesh in me is subject to the spiritual man in me. And the Bible tells us in Corinthians, amen, the 13th chapter, amen. That it's the love chapter. It don't act ruly. It don't speak ruly. Come on, somebody. Stop blaming your flesh. Stop blaming that you have chosen to live on your weak side. So here's something for you to think. And understand this, you cannot win against Satan and evil if you're not prepared to battle with the proper attire. Paul is clear about the importance of proper armor and basically spiritually in nature. Christ may make the equipment available to you and I, but we must put it on. Can you say amen? So S.D. Gordon said this. In the bent knee time, Christianity Today, volume 33, number 10. Is it startling to think that Satan can actually come into the heart of a man and such close touch in relationship with Jesus as Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him, was? And more, he is cunningly trying to do it today. Yet he can get in only through a door opened from the inside. Every man controls the door of his own life. Let me say that again. Yet Satan can only get through a door open from the inside. And every man and woman controls the door of his own life. Satan, I'm going to say this again. Satan can't. 
Satan cannot, Satan will not, and Satan shall not get in without your help. Stop living on the weak side. And let's start living from the spiritual side. In Jesus' name. Father, we come before you. We thank you. We praise you and worship you and we honor you tonight. And we thank you, God, for everything that you do and everything that you have done. In Jesus' name.